So, welcome to this uh, class on uh, receptors part 2. Uh, in this class, we will be talking about uh, Golgi tendon organs, what are called as joint articular receptors and uh, some cutaneous receptors. In the previous class, we saw the case of uh, muscle spindles and how muscle spindles serve as uh, length and uh, velocity sensors. So, in today's class, we will see a different sensor. So, if a note in the case of muscle spindle, we said that the sensor itself or the intrafusal fiber that is responsible for sensing the length is um, aligned in parallel with the force producing extrafusal fibers. This was the mechanism. N but yeah, is there some other way in which I can know, is there some way in which I can know the force produced by a muscle? Can I know the tension in the muscle? That is the question. The answer is yes and uh, the sensor that is responsible for the detection of tension called as Golgi tendon organ. So, how does this do that function? Golgi tendon organ is composed of a capsule that is located between the muscle and the tendon or located near the junction of the muscle and the tendon to remind ourselves what this situation is. So, let us say I am going to draw two bones. So, th that is a bone representationally. So, there is another bone here and we said that movements are produced by relative movement of bones. Right? No. Let us say that is the muscle and so this is called as a muscle or the muscle belly. This is composed of uh, contractile material and is neurally innervated. And the muscle is attached to the bone via tendons. This attachment, so what are, what are the tendons composed of? They are also co composed of contractile material, mainly they are composed of collagen. This muscle when it contracts or when its length reduces, that means that, that will happen when uh, the neural activation makes that to contract like that for example, then what will happen either the bones will move relative to each other or the tendon will elongate. Okay. This is the process. In a different class, we will discuss the details of this. So, the tendon is attaching to the muscle at that point. So, what you are seeing here is a zoomed out version of that. So, if we zoom out that on the one hand, you have the muscle fibers on the other side, you have the tendon. Okay. So, I am zooming out that part where the muscle is attaching to the tendon in between the uh, attachment you have a capsule that is uh, composed of uh, fibers that is intertwined by a neuron axons of a neuron. This neuron is so this axon is called as a 1 B afferent axon. We saw that the 1 A afferent axon is the primary spindle ending. and 2 is the secondary spindle ending, is it not? When, when this is getting pulled, suppose this is this tendon is attached to a bone here, this is getting pulled when that is getting pulled gets compressed because of the collagen fibers. So, the collagen fibers become uncrimped, the collagen fibers elongate and compress the neighboring uh, 1B axon. As the tension in the muscle increases, the compression of the collagen fibers increases. Because the compression of the collagen fiber increases, the number of channels going to be affected by the compression of these collagen fibers on, in this uh, 1B afferent axon is going to increase producing uh, you know action potentials. So, what does this mean? When will, when will this fire? That means, whenever there is an increase in tension of this muscle, there will be an increase in the firing rate of this 1B afferent axon of this neuron. So, because of this reason, Golgi tendon organs are nearly perfect force transducers, nearly very good force, tra force sensors. And a question is, how do we know this? It turns out that uh, there have been experiments. Uh, on uh, animals 
where they have studied the force versus uh, a say firing rate or, or the response rate or whatever. So, and for different in different uh, Golgi tendon organs, so as the force increases, so there are that is not there. So, with different slopes, but in general what you will see is that you know as the force increases the firing rate increases. So, if you take an ensemble of all these things you are going to get something like that. So, this is a relatively accurate force transducer and with with some slope right. So, if we if we know what the slope is then I am going to be uh, able to estimate the force depending on the firing rate if I know the approximate slope. So, I am going to be able to do that, but uh, it is not just one uh, Golgi tendon organ it is multiple is it not there are many. So, information is coming from many such uh, Golgi tendon organs. So, also there have been studies. So, another way of uh, representing the same data is that you know if the muscle force is at some baseline level there is going to be some baseline firing rate for that as the muscle force keeps increasing like that you see that there is an increase of uh, firing rate as the muscle force is kept constant at a different level there is a continued increased firing level here and then as the muscle force is reduced there is a reduction in the firing rate. So, then again once again telling us that you know this uh, serves as a very good a relatively accurate uh, force transducer. Another question is is that going to be consciously sensed. Now, that means can I say exactly how many Newtons is that. It turns out that uh, the debate on the conscious proprioception versus a non conscious proprioception is not yet settled. At least in the case of the Golgi tendon organs this information is not consciously felt by the organism. How is it even being used? What is the use of this? Um, there must be some use, but uh, when we say conscious uh, perception we are not able to say I am producing so much force. Whereas, in the length case uh, it is useful to with the help of other receptors also it is useful to come up with a body sense like where my body parts are. Here in this case how much force I am producing the people are not able to consciously say that. So, it seems or at least the current view is that at least in the case of Golgi tendon organs this information goes to processing of movements future movements planning processing and correction of uh, the present force product produced on, uh, on the environment etcetera, but not necessarily on to the conscious uh, level. Where does this where does all this information go? So, so far we have seen three cases uh, we have seen the 1 a are the primary spindle ending, we have seen 2 are the secondary spindle ending and then we have seen 1 b which is the which is the Golgi tendon organ is it not. Where does all this information go? These three together uh, con constitute what are called as proprioceptors or uh, some sense of body position or body's uh, uh, relative position body parts is relative position with respect to each other right. So, where does this information go depending on where this information is coming from they can go to several places. Uh, these pathways we will discuss in future, but at least I will just introduce in this class information from these we said that this is these are sensory axons these are sensory neurons is it not we said that this information will go to the dorsal column. The neurons on the ventral side are usually the motor neurons, the neurons on the dorsal side are usually the sensory neurons. So, this information goes to the dorsal spinal cord there in the dorsal spinal cord that is like saying this is going to some place in the body. So, in the dorsal spinal cord there is a nucleus called the dorsal nucleus of Clark. depending on again this is depending on where from this information is coming. If this is coming from thoracic vertebra level 1 to lumbar vertebra 4 or 5 let us remind ourselves the vertebral column and its uh, 
classification. There are seven vertebra in the, uh, in the neck, these are called as a cervical vertebra and there are uh, about there are there are 12 vertebra in the thorax and about 5 in the lumbar region and then depending on classification sacrum has sacrum is either one vertebra or five vertebra so if the information is coming from t1 to l4 l5 then it is going to the dorsal call nucleus of clark and from there there is a path that takes it to two places, one to the cerebellum. So, already we are talking about brain structures. I will be referring back to this in future. We will explain this function in greater detail in future classes. Information goes to two places, one is the cerebellum, the other is the primary somatosensory cortex. taking a position on what is what in general it is believed that the when the information goes to the cortex it is more consciously perceived and if it is going to subcortical structures it is not consciously perceived this is the general uh, view although although this view is being challenged so so information goes to the cerebellum via the spino cerebellar pathway okay so it also goes to the somatosensory cortex where conscious perception of what is going on is going to be formed. So, there are there, so that means this information is branching into two places. One place where the action for, depending on the input is going to be taken without regard to whether that is consciously approved or consciously acceptable. Another place where that is going to be consciously processed and a decision may be taken about whether that is. Uh, and if it is coming from about T1, what happens? So, if the information comes from C1 to C7, two specialized nuclei called cuneate nucleus and Grassley nucleus. So, and then again, this information goes back from from these two nuclei. This information goes to the cerebellum and the and the primary somatosensory cortex. So, this information again can be perceived what is and what is the pathway through which this happens cuneo cerebellar pathway for example, in the case of uh, cerebellum. So, th these details and these pathways we will reserve for future classes. The point is that this information is going to higher structures through specialized pathways and there are specific a nuclei that are responsible for relaying this information properly to specific places in the brain. Then there are a group of uh, proprioceptors that are believed to give information about joint angles. Why, why have all these length receptors, this, uh, these two length receptors in some sense is going to help me detect the joint angle is it not. So, if this is the elbow joint say this is the forearm this is the upper arm of a person and suppose that is the elbow joint and if I know the length of this muscle then in some sense I know what the joint angle is is it not. If the length is uh, say smaller then the joint angle uh, is different or if I know the lengths of all the muscles that innervate this in uh, that uh, that are uh, attached to this uh, joint then I can somehow estimate roughly at least in some sense uh, estimate the giant angle. The goal is to understand how what the relative positions of the body is is it not. And in the in the case of the elbow joint I can do that I can extend to this point, but beyond this this point if I extend what happens it could cause an injury right. So, at these intermediate joint angles this sensor is going to be practically silent, but when I am at the extreme this joint uh, receptor this sensor is going to start you know making uh, action potentials to warn the system somehow of impending danger you know you are at your extreme do not push yourself further uh, in some sense. So, that is the goal. So, the physiological extreme only at the physiological extremes they are more active. Uh, we are not able to come up with a joint angle versus uh, action potential curve in this case. So, they, they it seems like these are in some sense measure of uh, giant angle, but how exactly they do that is uh, still not understood. 
And then we have four uh, receptors specially dedicated to hand and finger function, right. These are uh, Meissner corpuscles, Pacinian corpuscles, Raffini endings and Merkel disc and then there are other free nerve endings and you know thermoreceptors etc. not mentioned. So, when you have, uh, so in the skin you have the outermost covering uh, that is the epidermis that by itself is composed of three la layers and uh, below the epidermis is the dermis and below the dermis is the endodermis and uh, below the dermis you have these Pacinian carpuscles those that are in green here and uh, then there are these Meissner carpuscles that are here and there are uh, Raffini endings here at the dermis at the region at that level and then there are uh, this Merkel disc. Why have so many? Because uh, kind of things that we do with the hand and the fingers, what are the kind of things? Several things, right. Uh, we could move our fingers on a surface like that and try and understand texture that is one one thing I can I can say this is a smooth surface versus uh, taking this keyboard and you know and doing that relatively rough surface right. At least at least there are indentations at least there are uh, structural ups and downs on that right. Uh, another thing that we do is press hard on a relatively sharp object when would we do, do that from time to time. For example, in the case of uh, blind people reading with braille for example, so there are you know specific uh, indentation specific raises uh, in place in a particular spatial distribution helping them to read things. So, that is that. So, Merkel discs are uh, specialized for vertical pressure on skin surface. So, they are, so that means they are going to be very useful in, in the reading of say braille. Why, why did I say this? Why did I mention um, braille? Because it turns out that in the case of uh, congenitally blind people, people who cannot uh, see from, 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 from birth for whatever reason, these individuals have increased sensitivity for these touch receptors and that, that level of sensitivity a person with vision can never reach, right. So, because our sen uh, we depend more on vision for uh, you know uh, information whereas the blind people because they are blind they cannot depend on vision. So, their uh, brain is adapted to sensing with uh, these sensors more and it has been shown that uh, there, there is uh, quite a quite a bit of data showing how uh, this their uh, plasticity at the, at the level of brain using neuroimaging is using, using different modalities at the level of uh, uh, <coughs> structures in the brain there are differences between uh, you know age match controls and con congenitally blind, blind individuals and this. So, while, while performing the same function while doing the same thing. So, and Meissner corpuscles in this case uh, sensitive to quickly changing pressure. Raffini endings again you know these are uh, slow uh, slowly adapting they are uh, responsible for you know uh, sensing larger skin areas uh, sensing over larger skin areas and uh, Pacinian corpuscles are rapidly changing. So, responsible for rapidly changing stimuli like vibration. So, two of these are slowly adapting two of these are rapidly adapting their functions are different their uh, differences in structure is due to the differences uh, required in the uh, function ok. So, this is the and then there are free nerve endings and there are nociceptors those that uh, sense pain right those, those that sense pain are called as nociceptors and uh, those that sense temperature thermoreceptors. There are others that we are not discussing so, so much for the cutaneous receptors information from the cutaneous receptors is also used in controlling movements especially of the fingers because I have the fingers and how much the skin has uh, deformed depending that is one information at least one source of information for controlling finger movements, but that is not the only source 
obviously there are proprioceptors of the muscles that control the finger movements but uh, the the fingers and hands also are bestowed with these uh, high quality uh, uh, receptors sensors that are responsible for sensing a whole number of things note that there are only two parts in the body two specific areas within the body where there is a high distribution of uh, sensory receptors one is the hand or the hands two is the lip and the mouth uh, area right uh, wh by the way there are uh, reasons why these two evolutionary reasons why these two must be important right because i'm i'm at least uh, evolutionarily when i'm trying to pick up an object i need to examine what this object is try try to come to terms with whether it is uh, you know let's say it is thorny it's a thorny fruit what's inside is useful i mean i like to eat it but you know i cannot just put it in my mouth and that is also sensed by the lip like what goes inside is in some sense controlled by the you know lip hopefully. So, which is why we like smooth things rather than I mean, nobody likes to eat a you know uh, sharp uh, thing right. So, that is the reason we, rice, we like uh, ice creams. So, anyway so that is with haptic perception. So, what else? So, in summary we have seen uh, Golgi tendon organ which is a nearly perfect force sensor or uh, tension sensor. So, it is going to sense how much tension is there in the muscle and joint articular receptors these are believed to be sensors of joint angles at least in the extreme positions. It is not clear what their function is or how if they are present in all muscles it is there more needs more information more research needs to be performed to understand their function better and then there are cutaneous receptors these are uh, Pacinian corpuscles, Meissner corpuscles, Merkel discs and Ruffini nerve endings and uh, other things such as uh, nociceptors, thermoreceptors, free nerve endings and such. So, all this information goes to as, as I said goes to the either to the dorsal nucleus of Clark or to the gracile and uh, cuneate nucleus and from there it goes to the somatosensory cortex where it is in some sense um, where sense is made out of what that uh, our conscious perception is happening in the somatosensory cortex. It turns out that how do you know by the way how do we know where the information is coming from? If, if the somatosensory cortex is receiving information from a whole bunch of body parts is it not? It is receiving from all the fingers and uh, hand, it is receiving from the rest of the body, it is receiving from the legs also. It turns out that there is within the somatosensory cortex there is a map of uh, which area is responsible for receiving information from which body part. So, this type of uh, somatic map or a body map also called as this, uh, this feature of a body map within the uh, somatosensory cortex and elsewhere. So, uh, a body map within the brain is also called as somatotopy. Okay. So, the, the using that there is this information that is um, that is sensed. So, with this uh, we will come to we will stop this class with this and uh, we will see in future classes the following topics uh, reflexes how how these proprioceptors themselves cause uh, reflexes and uh, what are the various types of reflexes. So, monosynaptic polysynaptic, oligosynaptic etcetera and uh, what are the mechanisms of uh, these reflexes? Reflexes are movements, reflexes may be movements. So, a response of the body to specific stimuli how these, uh, these are controlled. So, with this we will stop this class thank you very much.